All right, baby. Okay, here we go. Woo-hoo. Oh, be good to me, Accelerator. Come on, give me the energy. Give me the juice. Dear Accelerator Energy Drink, please give me the energy and the sufficient thermogenics to make it through this full fucking podcast. Please. I don't ask you for much. Praise A-Shock. Hallelujah. Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, as you know it, brought to you by our friends at Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beers, sports. Gotta love that shit. Huh. For a limited time, check out their new sauces. While they have the supplies, General So, Mm-mm. or how Jason says it, General Sal's. Or you can go ahead and try their sweet chili lime. I might have to try that sweet chili lime. That sound good. They won't be around forever, so get it while the supplies last. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey, big brother Jason Kelsey out of the University of Cincinnati. Both graduate, oh. collegiate, and high school graduates. That's right. Damn straight. New episodes come to you on Wednesdays. For the most part, subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights show with one s jason what do we have coming up my friend we got another great episode trev <laughs> we got a lot to catch up on we're gonna get our final thoughts on the first ever new heights beer bowl Ooh. we're gonna get to some getting out of the house with travis's big win at the match get out the house that's right and uh we're gonna weigh on something that's been popping up a lot this off season which is gambling in the nfl a very serious topic uh but before we get to the serious stuff let's get to our normal stuff new news hey we got some new merch. If you can't see it on our chest, somewhat on my belly. Oh. We got two new shirts coming out. Get this thing out the way. Oh my gosh. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then Travis Kelsey for president. Because, I mean, with Who the, the recent candidates, people? anybody can be president, it seems July, like July, these days. Big get it, baby. Big get it, vote. I, what did they say at the end of the lines? Huh? I concur with this message. <laughs> <laughs> I support this message. Why are you are you running as ladies man from SNL? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Travis, what are your thoughts on uh, the the Russia Ukraine s- well, situation? Well, if if your sex life ain't right, then your rights ain't right. But what do you think? Do you think we should be pushing and giving more weapons to the Ukrainian people, or should we be getting out of that situation and letting it handle Listen, itself? In the America that I. Tony, hold on. In the America, I can't even get a list. In, in my world, yes. Yes, everyone defends themselves, so lock and load. <laughs> I don't know that we can joke I about am, a I fucking am. major war happening in the world, but why not, you know? Lock and load, ladies and gentlemen, lock and load. Lock and load, okay. If you want to check out these t-shirts, you can check out the Oh My Gosh and the uh, Big Yeti for President shirt. You can check them out at homage.com slash new heights. That's right, right homage.com slash new heights. Both shirts available. In other new news, um, I officially have a donut out, Travis. Ooh, mm. I think I heard about this. Did you try it when you were at the shore? No, because that donut did not look good. Well... It's got peanut butter, bacon, chocolate, and honey on it. Two things that don't go together for me, peanut butter and bacon. It's a good combo. I'm telling you, you're missing out. Anyways, these are going to be sold at select New Jersey locations of the Fractured Prune. And the proceeds are going to continue to benefit uh, the Beef Philly Foundation, my foundation, which also benefits the Philadelphia Public Schools. Yeah. So go ahead and try it and tell me whether or not peanut butter and bacon go good together. I normally to don't like talk about cake it. donuts. I like Fractured Prune. We've, talked about, this, we've talked about this before. You I know. don't like... You but like, Fracture Prune is a cake donut. This is a cake donut. I'm just prefacing you gotta it. you got to tell the people not, what it's called because that's what kind of reeled me in until I saw there was bacon on pizza. Yeah, the butter. Fat Kelsey. <laughs> fat Kelsey goes to uh, support the Beef Philly Foundation. So if you find yourself in need of a donut and you are thinking you want maybe bacon and peanut butter along with chocolate and honey on one. And you want to support Beef Philly and Philadelphia Public Schools. This is the fucking donut for you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I mean, I must say, I, I love it. Why not just a plain glazed donut? Uh, I don't like cake donut glazed donuts. I, I just, cake donuts are It in just a different dawned realm. on me what you meant by cake donuts. You're talking about the dough. Yeah. Right. Like like Lamar's? Cake donut. No, that's a doughy donut. Mm, that shit is so good. That's a, a an airy, fluffy donut. Those are good glazed. Oh, this is a, oh. This is like the more compact, kind of like old fashioned donut style. I don't like those either. Fan mentions of the week, baby. 
Let's get into it. All right. We've got two new Eagles fans from Cole McKenzie on Twitter. Let's check it out. Mm. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, that's a f- Oh, my gosh. Kelsey Edward and Cameron Lane? Yep. They awesome. named their kid after dad? That's right. I don't think people. This is crazy. No, that dad my dad's is name a is fucking Edward. Legend. Yeah. So it's actually not named after us. It's named after dad. Well, the question is, did they call it Kelsey or Kels? It's a good question. Because if it's Kelsey, then that's not named after dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, if it's Kels. Right? If it's Kels, it is named after dad. If it's Kelsey, it's not. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say. Well, it's adorable. And, and his little brother, Cameron Lane, Lane Johnson. Ooh. Cam Jurgens. They love them some old linemen. Like this? You two little ones have old linemen written all over your face. Well, hopefully. At least all written all over your name. Do we prefer uh, people being named after us or dogs? I think dogs are a little more acceptable. We had uh, we named our dog after one of our favorite baseball players of all time. I feel like it's a, it's a big leap of faith to name your a kid after anybody. Anybody. Because there's just a long time frame. Unless. It's just a religious. long life. You know, the kid can be, I mean, think about those people, right? Pre-World War II that were big Adolf fans. Uh-huh. After World War II, they're stuck with Adolf. For the rest of their lives. And, like, that's a long period, and you can't go back on that. You can't. Like, if it's a dog, it's, like, fucking, like. Like, from that point 12 on, years tops after World War II, and then Adolf's dead, so it's not that big of a time. But You got to change. There's, like, 80-year-olds for a while there probably named Adolf, and there's no going back on it. Can't go back. I mean, I guess I could change your name, so I guess they could go back on it. Yeah, but once you... <laughs> how, dude, how evil do you have to be to just fucking... Name your kid after No, Hitler? to ruin a whole name. Oh, no. Nah. Like, <laughs> like, there are no more Adolfs. <laughs> that name is gone. Oh, that's just... <laughs> like, that is another level of dude. bad. Yeah. I mean, there's still Ted's after, like, Ted Kaczynski. Yeah. You know, there's... There's still Jeffries. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. Adolfs. No more Adolfs. Did the Hitlers, did the rest of the family change their name after? I can't be associated with that. <laughs> You're right. After that? Mm-hmm. I'm, out. I'm out. I don't know that guy. Never seen him before in my life. Before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we cut it out. <laughs> we also got our first fan art submission from the brand new Threads app. Oh, Threads app, nice. Um, if you were running out of places to follow the show, we're on Threads now. Oh, big big yeti out there swagged out. Hey, I ain't never looked that cool in my fucking life. Can what Damn, the fuck is? I'm about threads? to get an ice blue. I'm about to dye all my chest hair and body hair ice blue. It looks great. And I got to get a big yeti chain like that. You guys are. You guys are on to something here. I even got your gloves. Yep. Jason, let's talk a little get out of the house. Hey, this whole episode might be uh, just about getting out of the house because that's the only thing going on right now. I know. Um, and uh, because we have been outside the house the last couple weeks, we're going to start with our last week's episode, the New Heights Beer Bowl. Man, it was electric. Wasn't it? Let's start with it, baby. Jason, how do you think it went? I think it went uh, drinkingly. Very very smoothly. It was, it was a success. Dude. The contestants made it, as well as all the people in attendance. I don't know if everybody saw you won the first contest of, what, with the, of the day. The Stein drink, dude. That was what not was, a part of it, but it was. What is what was it. his name? James Seltzer. Smalls? James Seltzer. James. James Smalls. was, dude. James didn't stand a chance. Jimmy, I think it was. I, I think we need to get another rematch with uh, just a regular pint because there is a lot of lore out there that Jimmy can chug. All right, let's see who can let's let's see who can chug a shot faster. <laughs> fucking drink whoever finishes the drink it's not supposed to be the easier drink makes it more acceptable it's like it, you have to chug a beer it's a beer well it's a tall boy i'll tell you what it hurt going down dude i haven't chugged a stein you since hopper you, house at cincinnati i know what that feeling like when you tense up and try and chug a beer <laughs> And just take gulps it down. Yeah. and catch big yeah. air bubbles oh, yeah. like that. It feels like your sternum is about to explode. Yeah, I'm basically becoming a balloon at that point. Dude, I could see it on your face. It felt like. It hurt so dude, bad. You were just and trying I was like to make trying, yourself burp afterwards. I was afterwards. trying to burp, but burp in a way that wasn't going to make me puke up everything. The only just... way to make yourself burp is if you inhale more air. And that is not how you f- solve that solution yeah. by any means. No, but you, uh, you sold it, man. You went. Uh, above and beyond shout out to smalls man jimmy did a great job he, he knew going into it once he was a tall boy he was that wasn't his game well back to the actual beer bowl <laughs> oh, were yeah. you surprised disappointed with the Dude, competitors it was it was a surprise i honestly would you expect i didn't i didn't expect 
much because I had expectations no, I, were low. Had no idea what yeah. we were getting ourselves into because I so I didn't even like give myself the we just chance like, or thought to expect. So yeah, I was just like, what? let's we're sending it. We're yeah. doing this. First impressions of the of the golden. New Heights Golden Cup, the trophy. Electric. Gosh, I want one. Kayla really nailed that one. Nailed it. The fact that dad had the briefcase of cash, that was real cash. $50,000. Yeah. Shout Didn't out. Didn't have the handcuff though. That would have been better, but. Yeah. Something tells me that dad threw the handcuffs away because they were like little like poofy sex handcuffs. They and then he actually, acted like you couldn't find them. Where they, they go? <laughs> Next time we'll put it on a handcuff Apple watch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these handcuffs sell your heart rate. <laughs> Uh, how many times can we make that joke? <laughs> I tell you what, though, I thought I was actually pleasantly surprised with all the competitors. First of all, when we met them backstage to start off with, you it knew was it was going to be electric. They so were ready, energy. bro. They were ready to it, go. If I mean, shout out to the New Heights production crew for yeah. reeling in the, the best there you go, guys. ones there we shout go out, first shout out to nine two percenters for all the submissions yeah but over 200 we applicants found the electric ones and the and the best team names the best team like combos because everybody brought it it was awesome we had six-year-old women dressed as santa claus in there it was amazing yeah um nobody disappointed it was had so a much giant fun. dick yeah, had a big old shaft <laughs> big old schlong on it. walking around like nick Foles, just swinging i liked that we did the skills based instead of just straight straight chugging from the get go because it gave everybody a chance, you know, to be involved. One thousand percent. I thought it was good. Level the playing field for sure. Flip cup was a very good. It's an easy one. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be good at chugging. You just no. got to have good skill. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, we did a great job, man. As in we, I say the production. Yeah, whenever we say we, we're really talking about the people that really make this. Show. All right, here we go. <laughs> what should we change for next time? The one cup long drive. Not a fan. No, I knew <laughs> they that. cut it up. The production I, team cut it up. It took these guys a long time. To I nail knew the one it was cup. Gonna take forever. We were the there. The table was long. One cup is always the hardest one to hit. The second nobody, one. What? Nobody was like warmed up and like could test like the gauge and the like depth perception of like throwing it. Everybody just went into it cold. Just I was just like, we can't do. It. We got to figure out. Well, the second one better. went by quicker. The first one was a long one. I think they both took too long. We should have just one better tiebreaker. I don't mind it, though. A tiebreaker, one cup, I thought it was all right. But it was a long one. It was long. Yeah. The helmet chugs were obviously the thing we got to change. Yeah, no, we got to Clearly did not work. Yeah, we did, well, nobody uh, tested them. No, we did test them. We right. tested them beforehand. What happened is the straw going into the helmet had to come up so that the angle wasn't so severe that it was pinching the sides. And I think when those guys are getting excited to chug, they pulled down the straw, and that started pinching off where it was going in the glass at. That's what I think. That's my hypothesis. I didn't run any forensics on it, but. Dude, let's just go up to Lowe's or Home Depot and make our own. That's the real way to do it. Yeah, because those were a little janky. They were. They were. Electric, though. Yeah, it was Electric. great. <laughs> the way it did. What do you mean? Freaking um, uh, Fire Ice? Dog. Huh? Slim Dog. Slim Dog? Sly Dog. Slew Dog. Our fucking referee. Fur dog. <laughs> that boy fur dog. Oh my fucking. Fur dog. Right? He was so. Fu he was fucking one of the best referees I ever the seen. Best, the best was the tiebreaker with the Dykstra's. He, he was. Fur dog, make a decision. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't know who to go to. <laughs> Shout out to fur dog, baby. The OD. It was elected. Honestly, though, wouldn't change any bit of it for the first year. Obviously, we're going to keep trying to make that thing better and better. Yeah. And can't wait to see more submissions for next year already. Yeah, I think next year is going to be even more electric. I mean, we, we did raise, though, for the entire day of the uh, Shorebirds, the Eagles down at the shore, including the New Heights Beer Bowl. We raised over $375,000, and it's still Damn. climbing for the Eagles Autism Foundation. So. A largely successful day, and thank you to everyone for supporting, not just the people that were there, but the people that donated who didn't oh, go, yeah. and the people that watched this, this podcast, uh, the 92 Percenters. Thank you so much for supporting it. It all went to a great cause, and a uh, sure as shit fun time. Shout out to Fire and Ice for bringing the heat. Hey. Nice. Well, what else did we get out of the house with, Jason? You want to talk about? Well, hold on. If you're still looking to donate, uh, Travis and I will be uh, competing head-to-head -to, -head to see who can raise more money for Eagles Autism Foundation over the next three weeks. Click the links in the description if you want to donate uh, to me so that I beat Travis at something. Um, in, in this video, uh, support Team Travis, uh, or more importantly, uh, Team Jason. 
you know what to do. 92 percenters, let's get this win. All righty, we're going to get to the next one. And I've been waiting to talk to you about this. I've purposely not talked enough about it to you. Trav, you won the match. Yeah, I did. I did told you, you to ever, hammer it. I told you to hammer it. Did in you? Vegas. I told you to hammer it. Nobody wanted to listen to me. Did you expect to win? Yes. What was your percentage level that you thought you were going to win? 100%. 100%. 100%. What in the world made you think 100% you'd be? I play that course a lot. Yep. I'm way better at golf right now than I've ever been. Clearly. On top of that, me and Pat Mahomes, man, the combo, You guys do baby. have good chemistry. It's crazy. <laughs> Every time he had a bad shot, you hit a good shot. Every time man. you kind of hit one of that, which wasn't often, Pat was there. Yeah. I couldn't get off the tee much, but we were – listen, man, that's what we got do, man. the tee on that par three. All right now. I can't tell you how many people – and I'm not – I mean, I hate giving you compliments. I cannot tell you how many it. people – have <laughs> told me how good your golf swing is and how like impressed they are silky. with you as a golfer. It's silky. You've always had a smooth swing. You're a smooth athlete. Not right now. Trav, Trav is smooth as shit. Shout out to mom. Mom mm. gave me all this smoothness. Yeah. Well, dad didn't give it Actually, to you? Actually, I'm not going to lie. Big Ed might have given me the smooth. And mom gave me the explosion. D- dad ain't giving it. Big, Big Ed smooth? gave me that smooth hand-eye coordination. Smooth is not one word I think of when I think of Ed Kelsey. What? Watch dad walk down the aisle. All right. Uh, watch, <laughs> <laughs> watch Dad. Big Ed is a watch Dad spread mayonnaise. On the <laughs> watch Big Ed dip a chicken wing in a bucket of blue cheese. <laughs> no, I definitely got my smoothness from Big Ed, man. Smooth talker, man, can sell you anything. He is a smooth talker. What do you think of it? Yeah, I don't know. Give us a rundown. What was it like? Um, I'll tell you what, man. I just thought it was an amazing experience to go up against. Guys that I I honestly admire in the NBA. I mean, guys that have changed the game um, in terms of just an offensive arsenal. What seems to be an unstoppable force when they're both on. Yeah. And kind of like how me and Pat like to, you know, uh, balance out the the deficiencies or whatever you want to say, like uh, balance out our weaknesses. Those two play off of each other like none other. I mean, it's like poetry in motion. Well, not in this match. Those guys are on. uh, Yeah, well. So, but on the basketball court, they on do. On the basketball yeah, court, it's exa- exactly what they do. And they change the game in their own right. I think me and Patty Mahomes are doing that on the football field. So it was cool to be a part of that dynamic, even though we were in a different world. You know, us yeah. both stepping off of our playing fields, uh, jumping into golf, a sport that we all love to play. And um, yeah, it was just a, it was an awesome experience, man. I enjoyed every bit of it. But um, it goes back to my point that I've been trying to tell you. Well, we're going to talk about it. From the jump. You don't got to say it yet. We're going to talk about it. I've been trying I'm going to give jump. you your props. Let's start with the actual match. And it started with a wonderful tweet of everybody in their game day fits, including <laughs> Travis Kelsey in his full knit fit. My everyday um, fits, baby. I mean, dude. Nike, baby. What in the world check. in Vegas or at over 100 degrees – did you think sweater? Well, sweater shorts. It was it was knitted, and it wasn't a sweater. It was a vest. Um, a sweater vest. Knitted vest. <laughs> um, it was light. It wasn't a heavy. It wasn't a heavy knit. You know what I mean? It wasn't mean? a heavy knit. No. It looked heavy. It was heavy when you layered it with the shirt. Your underneath. pants. Not only did they have the knit underneath, mm-hmm. they had another layer of knit laid on top of it. Like oh it yeah, like, yeah. The po- the the sewed in pockets that weren't really pockets. It was kind of just like a fashionable statement. Yeah, there, I think the um, the pants the that designer, had those are like work pants where they have like another thing in front to cover the pants. But clearly, the knit pants yeah. weren't covering. The designer that we just, teamed up with. Um, that's kind of like his signature on his pants and his uh, his jacket. Oh yeah. But it was it was awesome. I shout out to Nike for letting me even do something. Uh, you know, bespoke and. Uh, represent the brand that way. Um, I did I think, think it, it, did, it cool. juiced up and made me feel feel the part, man. Dion said it best, baby. When you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you play good. Well, whose fit do you think is better, yours or Clay's? Because I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Come on, man. Man, Come Clay on. was like he looked, making, he looked like he was in middle school K- stepping Clay's out there. I didn't know a lot more what? money from the brand that he was. <laughs> so I Dude, can't say shit. Right when I man. saw the the picture, I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> Travis about to win this. <laughs> I know. I should have come after him. I should have come after him. He almost killed a guy, though. I called it for him. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I felt bad for my guy, man. It's one thing. So it's one thing if you've played in a bunch of the tournaments or you've been on TV swinging a club. Like, I've done the American Century. been fortunate enough to get the invite to American Century, yeah. NBC, and um, American Century, uh, 
golf tournament out in Tahoe every single year for the past like four or five years. So I've felt the pressure of walking up to the tee box or at least swinging a club in front of a lot of people and yeah. like being now on the broadcast. I don't know if I've ever seen Clay in that situation. So that was like the first time for him to be in that situation. It was every single shot, every single hole. And if you're not playing good, it's, I mean, yeah, it's not going to help <laughs> your confidence and how you're swinging the club or... I just uh, there was a moment all, where all I, I was like, "Dang, man!" Help you? Yeah, I was hoping he was gonna keep uh, get out of that hole that he was in, man. But uh, me and Patty Mahomes, we were just on one. Dude, I've never swung a club with people downrange. Like typically, I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna wait for everybody to be as far away from this tee box as possible, so that I can finally hit this ball." You guys are hitting it with. There were a few times. I mean, there's hundreds of people surrounding this hole. Yeah, there's people behind you, but there's a lot of people downrange. I mean, two people were hit. At least, I'm pretty sure there were there were more than that. I don't want to. Well, I know Pat hit a guy. Hit a kid. Hit a kid. He got a sign ball though, and he wore it like a champ. Hey. Wore it like a freaking champ. Where did he hit him in the arm? I think he caught him right in the hip. I'll take a golf ball and a hit for a sign, Pat Mahomes. And it was like, and the thing ran up on the on the green after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, dude, it did bounce. <laughs> it, it bounced like that off his hip. It probably hit the bone if it's bouncing like that. He's you know, like I said, he wore it. Well, Clay, Clay hit a guy in the time. skull. OG. Oh, he headshotted yeah. somebody. Dude, I saw the That's man. That's like plus points if you're I playing Call of Duty. <laughs> Golf, not so much. It's negative. Yeah. You're getting a few more XP points and you dumb somebody <laughs> on video games. That one, you just feel bad. When Clay hit the, the gentleman, everyone saw it hit and they didn't see it necessarily hit the gentleman in the head. I saw yeah. it from, I got these Hawkeyes yeah. 2020 vision, really 2012 vision. I got like a zoom factor on my mm, nice. I saw that thing. And I saw his head disappear, the ball go 30 yards the other way, and then yeah. his feet end up where I was looking where his, where his head, head was. was. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bad so it was like a whoop, and his yep. feet went up in the air. Hopefully you're all right, big guy. But um, it was um, it was unfortunate. Is what Apparently it was. you got to keep your head on a swivel down at the match. I mean, got to at least, if you're, if you're anywhere <laughs> downfield of like, or down, don't the, down range. Down yeah, just don't yeah, be down. down yeah. Just stay behind it. Gotta, That's like when your buddy's going. When your buddy's getting ready to go, you got to know who your buddy is. Whether you can stand kind of to the side, or whether you need to be behind that fucker. Nobody topped uh, Josh Allen last year. Josh Allen hit, I think, four people. Four people. Three or four people. Yeah. What are people Jay still Allen. standing in front of all these people at the match? Have they not learned? I don't know. Is it like a badge of honor to get hit with a golf ball at the match? Well, you get a free signed. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I stand right here. All right, I got three things I need signed by Pat. I'm going to stand right in the middle of the fairway. Just standing with a gift bag. <laughs> He's running after just the a, ball. Just a pro- <laughs> <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was fun. And even to have Draymond and Von Miller right there kind of as the uh, – as the supporters of the NFL and the NBA, man, <laughs> when I thought was we were out there having a blast. Yeah, man. it looked like it. Steph was as cool as the other side of the pillow, man. Mm-hmm. Just one of the best dudes, you know. It was it was awesome, man. Well, I tell you, who was not cool was uh, Draymond when he tried to chug that beer. Dude, he wore it bad. He he is it of his first time. Was that a Chug Bud? That was a Chug Bud. Shout out to Chug Bud. It's a heck of a device for yeah. a golf well, it's, bag. It's, though, it, man. You know what it is? It's a combination of a shotgun and a and a beer ball. Yeah, but it shortens and, the beer ball. Yeah, and, and makes it's like it easy pow, it's right down your throat. You know, it's the be- listen when I need swing feel, or really when I just want to feel instantly drunk. Yeah, I slap one of those things in. All right, just whew, down one in like two seconds. Game over. All right, let's get to the real discussion of the match. I have been on record for the entirety of this show as NBA athletes are the greatest athletes in professional sports and that no NFL player can play in the NBA. I'm going to give you your props. You were clearly the best athlete out there on the match. I mean, it's not even close. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. And what was also more apparent was – you and Clay are the same height. Like, I thought basketball players were, yeah, like, he's, all... He's a little taller than me. I Clay saw a did picture. size my ass up, though. He looked, he? he looked me up and down. I thought you'd be way bigger. I'm like, God damn it, Clay. <laughs> I'm 255 pounds. Why does everyone think, think I'm so tiny? I don't think he was taller. I saw a side-by-side. You guys look pretty much... Maybe an inch. Ain't much. I, I, I'm fully convinced now. If you would have stuck with basketball, you could have played in the NBA. Potentially. If you had the right opportunities come your way... Everything goes right. I could have maybe been a Deladova, somebody like that. You're not being a Deladova. That's not even your skill set. You're right. We need to make this happen because you're talking. You are talking so much shit 
on Della Dova. And you've been talking trash on Matthew, Della Dova. I love you. But we need to make this happen. You and Della Dova, one on one, go. to settle this. One on one. He would fucking and one mix. He's going to destroy right you. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be out there like hot sauce, crossing my shit up. You're just not going to get an open shot on Delhi. Huh? How are you going to get an open shot on Delhi? What do you mean? Delhi? He's a defensive specialist. You're not getting around him. Specialist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's That's a, what he does. He's a, he's a try hard white guy. What do you mean? Like I said, defensive specialist. <laughs> 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 just another word for what Delhi, you just man, said. I fucking love you. Way to bring one home for the city, baby. Delhi. <laughs> fucking love you, man. I will forever say this the transition from basketball players being able to play football is easier or more yeah. fluent than guys playing football. You could have played in the NBA if you would have been playing the it, basketball for the last 12 years or whatever. Yeah. I but, think uh, I think you already know it's a long shot. <laughs> would have had to figure out how to dribble. Didn't? Well, I mean, there's some guys that can't dribble in the NBA. True. They're all seven-footers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, no. I mean. I mean, it's a dream. That is Robin. It, it was once a dream. Either and, way. Anderson Verge um, I know I'll never be as good as like a big old like, baby Steph. deer. Yeah. I was never going to be that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's I'd have been probably player, fair to say role player, bench player at best practice player, whatever you want to call it. I might've been in a fucking suit on the side. Yeah. Shout out to the gang, man. All the respect in the world to the splash brothers. We'll see you if you can fun as hell to play with, man. We'll see if you can play in the NBA. Go get another ring fellas. Matthew. Make that thing five, this. get five of them things. Get the whole hand filled. Yeah. And then let's, unless you're playing let's the Sixers, get a rematch. I don't even care about that anymore. I just want to watch you play basketball. Della Dova. He's going to annihilate you. I can't wait. What I get for talking shit? All righty. This episode is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. <laughs> for a limited time, head to B-Dubs and get some wings with their new sauces. General So and Sweet Chili Lime. Ooh, they're the perfect duo, just like me and Jason. Mm. <laughs> General Tso delivers a sweet and spicy taste while Sweet Chili Lime hits you with that zesty flavor. They won't be around forever, so get them while the supplies last. Anywhere you find Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm. We also need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking during the show. That's Accelerator Active Energy. Shout out. Hell. If you've been looking for something with zero sugar that gives you sustained energy, that gets the metabolism going and gives you the enhanced focus, you need to record a podcast. You There's no way that check exists. Out. You got to check out. those things exist in one thing? No fucking way. That's what I really call it. I really call it no fucking way because <laughs> there's no fucking way. All of these things yeah. can be in one can. But it is. It is. That. Go ahead and get you guys some of this accelerator active energy. Jason, talk to them about the flavors. Uh, well, we got a lot. We got berry li lime lemonade. We got uh, mm -hmm. starberry. Ooh. You're drinking peach paradise. I don't know if I've had peach paradise yet. Well, go ahead. One of the few. Spot. I'm not drinking anything you put your mouth on. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy uh, <laughs> cherry limeade. <laughs> I'll try it. I'll Accelerator try. Active Energy drink available nationwide at Target, Meyer, and Sheets. And if you're around Kansas City, you can find that shit in Quick Trip, too. Fuck you, cuz. <laughs> Let's talk about some cow updates. Hey, yo. Jason got out of the house and made his way to Missouri. <laughs> That's right. Good old Missouri. Missouri. Southeast Missouri, to be uh, specific. What'd you do with these cows, man? How many do you have right now? I got 18 cows, not including the calves we had last year and the calves we've had this year. Because? They're not cows yet. Oh, all right. So a cow is a female, like, offspring-producing animal. Message. Calf, I forget at what point they turn from a calf to a heifer, if they're heifer calves. But either way, heifer is a female that hasn't calved yet. All of these are too young to have calved, so they're still calves. A heifer? Heifer. Heifer is a female that has not calved. Okay. Cow is a female cow. Do you mm -hmm. know what a bull is? Bull got them. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Bull don't care. You know what a steer has? Is he one of those? Well, if a bull has. Is he one of those? those if a bull has. What does supporters? a bull have? What? What does a bull have? Bull's got some nuts. Steer. Steer ain't got no nuts. That's right. It's a castrated bull. Because Jason ate him. It's just part of being a cowboy. I should have been a cowboy. Should have learned to roll the rain. Yeah, the herd is quickly uh, getting a lot bigger. With my six feet. Not you running on a cattle drive. Feeling young girls' hearts just, just like Gene and Roy. Roy. 
singing those campfire songs. Oh, I should have been a cowboy. And sits I'm and, so shocked you know that song. Well, should have been a fucking cowboy. Well, yeah, we got 18 cows with more coming, and we got to figure out what we're going to do with this meat. Should I just make her hamburgers? <laughs> you going to try a hamburger? Some, a Jason, beef? I thought you were supposed to sell the fucking meat. Well, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> All I know is that I got a lot Take of poundage of beef butcher. coming. Take it to a butcher and sell some meat. I'm going to try. I don't sell know how to do USDA, this. USDA, Kelsey meat. I don't know how to sell meat. <laughs> and somehow I have okay. too many cows. Come on over to Kansas City. I'll, tell you, I'll show you how to show sell me? some meat. Yeah. Kelsey beef. Missouri, Missouri. When are you going to come down? That's what I want to know. L look at all these pictures. Look at how fun it looks. I'm about to watch you fucking. Just look at all these fun pictures. It's a community event. Look at the kids. Look at the joy on everybody's face. That kid has, he, those are a pair of bull's testicles right there that that kid has. He called them his nut chucks. He's just <laughs> flipping around all day. <laughs> I swear to God. Was he Bruce Lee in them things on fucking people or what? I, I think he did actually do it to one person. I ate one. I ate two, actually. Fried? Baked? Right there in the fire. Raw? Well, on the fire. They were cooked. I'm not eating it raw, no. You ain't eating raw nut? No, I'm not eating. <laughs> no. When are we going to get you down there? Dude, I. It's in your own backyard. Do you know how many Chiefs fans were there? How many Chiefs fans that are in Southeast Missouri that never get to see you? Do they have satellite TV? They're watching the games, yes. There you go. Potentially. I give them a shout. I think you should come on down. All right. Just not during nut cutting season. Not during the branding? No, I can't do that kind of get shit. Get yourself some raw milk. Yeah. Had some raw milk this week. Listen, I'll fuck with some milk now. All right. Milk fresh out the titty, baby. <laughs> All righty. Let's get to some actual news. In the last week, the NFL announced four more players have been suspended for violating the league's gambling policy. What am, what am I missing? What I, am I missing? I don't here? think anything. I'm telling you the whole thing right now. Where are, where are players getting it confused that they can gamble on NFL games? I don't know. Isaiah Rogers... Rashad Berry I'm of the Indianapolis Colts, sorry. free agent. Oh. Demetrius Taylor is suspended indefinitely through at least the conclusion of this next season for betting on NFL Why games that? last year. Why? I don't know. Every To each his own. I don't know what the scenario is. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know what they do in Philly. I don't know what they do in other organizations because I've only been in Kansas City. But every single year in training camp, they tell you. we get told yeah. that there is no betting in the facility yeah, well, they also or say in that. any NFL. They said, they said don't no do a lot betting, of period, yeah. let alone if you're out of the facility or in a facility or on the road or in, you cannot bet on NFL games at all. Correct. That's what I've been, that's been my understanding of yeah. all the rule the entire time before sports betting was a lot, before. The yeah, the rule draft, has not changed. Yeah, no. before yeah. we have all these casinos as our as our sponsors in the NFL, mm -hmm. before all this has been a part, I, I've been completely understood that you cannot bet on games. Why is this offseason everybody getting hit with betting on NFL games? I just think more guys are doing it because it's easier to do now with all the betting apps and all that stuff. And it's more traceable probably because people do it on like apps and whatnot. But either way. I just don't get it. And Nicholas I petit Ferry of the Titans was suspended for the first six games for betting on non-NFL sports at the club facility. Again. Something that they tell us we cannot do. They do. They do say that. They do say do not bet on – you can't bet on anything. But I will say this with a caveat. The only thing I don't like is that they're not listing, like, what level – because, like, guys will have, like, their college teams, and you'll make, like, a friend, friendly wager with your college team. That happens across the NFL. I've never heard of that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, what level is acceptable? I feel like this has to be, like, he was – like on like a full on bookie site or something like that, right? I'm not going to whatever. I don't know. Either way, dude, I I know a guy named Pete Rose, and I heard that you I've know Pete seen, Rose. No, I've heard of a guy. Heard I of know guy. of him. Yeah. No of no of him. Charlie Hustle, baby. He hustled. He was a hustler. Was he a hitter? He was. Was he a Hall of Famer? In my eyes. <laughs> but I've seen what happened to his career, and it's yeah, like his why legacy? even flirt 
with it? Well, I think it's Why because guys are addicted to gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. I mean, people like gambling. It's a thing, and it's very prevalent now. In fact, people like doing it so much. Jonathan Jones of the Patriots said, I understand rules are rules, uh, but I can risk my life so that my team wins, but I can't risk $1,000 on my team winning. Seems a bit no, extreme. Been, I don't know many people that have... I don't know a lot of people that have died playing football. I don't know you're risking your life, but... I... I'm I'm on his side in terms of if you bet on yourself. No, I'm out on that. To win. Here's the problem with that. That sounds good in theory. But anybody that knows somebody that's been in debt before to casinos knows the predicament that that puts a guy in. What happens when you're $14,000 in the hole? Because you've been betting on your own self. And then the bookie says, hey, you do something in this game, all of a sudden your, your slate's clean. Yeah, well. Because that shit happens. You can't just... Yes, if in a perfect world, if you wanted to bet on your own team and there was no repercussions for it, and you couldn't get into debt to casinos that could leverage you to fucking throw football games, yeah, you could do that. But that's not a perfect world. Moral of the story: Don't I? I, I really don't think people understand the effect that gambling has and the amount of debt you can get into quickly. It's been made very much normalized in our culture recently, and it's becoming so in the NFL. And it does affect the integrity of the game. It's not as simple as just betting on your team to win. Like, there's a lot more factors in play here. Listen, you know where I stand. I'm, I ain't betting on shit. Yeah. Well, I'll bet on some, some stuff. I, I Listen, the only thing I'm betting on. I do think on, gambling's kind of fun. I, listen, but yeah. I don't condone it. I don't th- I'm don't. i not going to push it on Catch people. me on the wheel, baby. Huh? You the catch wheel? me on the wheel. You're a big roulette guy? Ooh. <laughs> Red or black? I'm playing numbers. That 50 50 just said we're not going to pub- publish. We're trying not to normalize gambling. Why? We just talked about you it. You just said it was fun. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> Tell you what, man, when your number hits, <laughs> <laughs> feel it in my plums. Kids, stay out of it. Don't do it. It's, yeah, it's don't vicious. do it until you're it's old like- enough to gamble. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's move on to no dumb questions. You know what? Actually, before we leave this fucking topic, I'm fucking upset only because now I have to sit through an even longer meeting on Dude. why the fuck I can't gamble and why I shouldn't gamble. And now I got to sit through the because the league has to do their due diligence yeah. and make sure they make it fucking clear that we can't fucking gamble in the facility or on NFL fucking games anywhere. As if people don't already as know if that. they already didn't go over that. Ah, Dude, these that just <laughs> enters you into to what training camp really is just <laughs> NFL players sitting in meetings getting told what they can't do because yeah. other guys fuck it up yep and the, it, I always like seeing the percentage by position when Lenny's up there he's like alright this year's a rest it's like a like you're in a like a yeah, everybody knows who. <laughs> I just like it. I just like that they put it like a statistic so it's like almost like a bragging rights who's at risk yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it's a clean sweep by the defense every, every time, time. <laughs> D D linebacker, D line, D line, Leroy. It's like, man, the defense really can't get this together. Guys haven't figured out Uber at 2 a.m. yet. <laughs> so true. So true. What the fuck is in these accelerators, man? Uh, I am some sweating. I'm laughing so hard right it's now. It's a good episode. I don't know if we can keep any Woo. of it. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can keep too much of this. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports my whole body health. You might not believe this, but I actually drink AG1 every day. I don't believe that one bit, Jason. Why not? Why on earth would you take AG1 every day? Because I'm an NFL player and uh, we got a lot going on. Hmm. And uh, AG1 gives me an easy way to get a single solution that supports my entire body and covers my nutritional basis. Hmm. That's fascinating. Is it? So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D. Yeah. If you can't get enough sun, get you some AG1. Five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Check it out. Check it out. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. 
What? With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. I think I actually knew that. And the NFL season's almost here. Hey. And we have a special discount. <laughs> of course we do. A secret promo code just for the 92 percenters for a very yeah. limited time. 15% of any NFL tickets. Listen to me, people. For a very limited time, get 15% off any NFL tickets. That's so crazy. Are you fucking kidding? This is gold. 15%? Doesn't matter if you're a first time buyer or not. You can get 15 fucking percent off any NFL. Jason, tell them. Okay, just click the link in the description, sign in, and you can get 15% off discount, which will be auto applied to your account. Doesn't matter if you purchase Seat Geek tickets before, just click the link in the description and save yourself some money. Because these tickets are expensive and 15% 15 percent of expensive cents. tickets that's, a, that's fucking, a lot especially if you get some really expensive tickets you can save a lot of money at 15 percent yeah that means you're only fucking like if paying. you get four seats or the, you get save like 15 well this is nfl if you get 50 yard line up front tickets club seat tickets you're only paying 85 percent for this shit yeah it's like a, that's a steal fucking steal you're stealing you're teaching you're, saving, you're, you're basically saving, this you shit be, you could be saving hundreds of dollars Moving on to No Dumb Questions. Hey, our favorite part. Let's get to some No Dumb Questions because there are no dumb questions, just dumb people. As always, No Dumb Questions is brought to you by our friends at Accelerator. Mm. It's got us feeling fantastic today. I got mm -hmm. that peach paradise. Jason, what, are you, what you got over there? I got Starberry. Ooh, that boy, Starberry. Do you want to go? <laughs> at Merperry, if that's how you say it. Merperry. 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 Uh, what professional sport would be the funniest to add a mandatory amount of alcohol Ooh. to? What would the mandatory amount of alcohol be? Would it be a specific kind of alcohol or team's player's choice? That's a fun question. Yeah, I like this. Let me think about this for a sec. I'm going to go with NASCAR. <laughs> what do they got to drink? You can't be above. You, you got to be just above the legal limit. <laughs> uh, how do you think of this? So <laughs> well, the first thing I thought of was the one thing the you shouldn't limit. do when you're drinking, driving NASCAR. Sounds like a good time. They got helmets on and Those, they're getting uh, crashes half the time anyways. It can't get that much worse. Yeah, it can't, it can't be that bad. It'll be hilarious. What are they drinking? They as long as nobody beer? dies. What? They got to drink beer? Yeah, I don't think you want You don't want them too liquored up. You just want them kind of swerving. You just want like a little bit of like, yeah, I can't stand my lane. How, 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 how? So how many drinks does it take for you to swerve? I don't, this isn't like a Tootsie Pop question. I don't know how many drinks <laughs> it takes to get to the <laughs> level of drunkness. Oh, man. Like, I think. You kids will never know. <laughs> I think. Uh, About a Tootsie Pop commercial. I don't know. What is the, I don't even know what the legal limit is. What is it? 0 0.08? Is that the legal limit? Yeah. So if 0 0.08 is the legal that's limit. That's like one beer. I think it's, well, it depends on how heavy, whatever. 0 0.08, I think, I think. You've never. Let's get people. You've never just. I did have a breathalyzer one year at the shore, and all <laughs> just to like see how high you, if we were getting. It. <laughs> not for driving purposes, we yeah, did not yeah, drive, yeah, but no. you're just in the bar, just like. I, I got more yet. <laughs> Hold on, what was the highest number? Somebody got it to like two point uh, point oh two. Oh my fucking gosh! Point two, like three or something like that. And they were very drunk. drunk. They yeah. were very drunk. Yeah. They were like blacked out drunk. Anyways, so yeah, let's just get them to like one point of a solid like 1.2. 0.12. 0.12. 0.1. 0.1. Point one. Point one. Point one is, I mean, you're halfway to two. You're halfway blacked out. That's pretty good. Yeah. What other sport? I like it, dude. That's, I mean, fuck. Baseball. Be kind of, I mean, it's basically a dizzy bat. You ever try to play football? <laughs> like hammered? I feel like people already play baseball hammered. Softball. I mean, yeah. Softball leagues. Everybody Babe Ruth did it for face. years and he hit like 60 home runs. This is true. Some of my favorite fights of all time are watching two heavyweights just absolutely shit faced at a bar trying to swing at each other. Boxing. Boxing. Dude. <laughs> Dude, throw two guys in the boxing ring. It's not a bad have idea. To, have to bring that the. Yeah. Time around. At what level but, of drunk are they boxing? Oh, you got to be shit faced. Let's, let's take it to 1.5. 1. 1.5. 1. 1, or 0. 0.15. 0. 0.15, yeah. 0. 0.15. I want, I want to see guys just fucking. Swaying. Just fucking. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's the sound that all of them make when they throw it. It's not that's like a sound jab. Right you know what I mean? Yeah. It's never. A <laughs> the jabs go out the window, the higher the alcohol percentage. The more it's just haymakers. Oof. Yeah. You get a guy to like do a 360 on one of the swings. 
<laughs> Those are the best videos. I'm going boxing. Boxing or NASCAR. Face. Dealer's choice on what they want to drink. I guess it's really just every sport's better. Five. Well, thank you, Mer Perry. That was a pretty fun question. All righty. Our next question is from Mercy R. Jacob. What was the first person to milk a cow trying to do? I think they were trying to milk a cow. Yeah. I don't. What came first? The chicken or the egg? The milk or the cow? I don't fucking know. I think the milk came second. Cow had to be there for the milk to come out of the cow. It's true. This All I'm so saying true. is, I don't know, dude, like, why would there be anything else expected other than the milk coming out of the cow? This isn't like the question, like, what, how did the first person figure out that smoking weed got you high? Like, they saw calves drinking out of the fucking cow's udders. They knew that there was milk in the udder, and they just milked the fucking cow and drank the, the milk. Like, there's not like a question mark here. We might have our first dumb question. Yeah. This might be the first one. <laughs> All right. Well, keep sending us your no dumb questions or just make them dumber than they were this week. And thank you to our friends at Accelerator for sponsoring mm. this dumbass segment. Mm. All righty. That wraps up this episode of New Heights. Yeah. That's right. Best one yet. One of the few ones we made it here to the uh, wonderful Wave Sports and Entertainment Facility. Make sure you subscribe to the New Heights channel on YouTube so you know when all the new episodes are coming out and listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by our friends at Buffalo Wild Wings. <gasps> Wings Beer Sports. Wow. I don't even know if that's her slogan anymore, but I fucking love saying it. Yeah. Follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S for fun mm. clips throughout the week. And thanks to our production and crew. You guys are going to delete half this shit, and we thank you. <laughs> thank you to all the 92 percenters. Until the next time, baby. Woo! Peace. Peace.